and uh, they hope that will be an even bigger event. Alisa. All right, Robbie, thank you for that report. And the event was funded entirely by donations from the community. On the Health Watch, there's a push for people to get flu shots ahead of peak season in January. The local Visiting Nurses Association made it easy for folks with a drive through clinic this morning. Action News reporter Stephanie Trong has the story. And this is the only drive through clinic hosted by the VNA this year. It kicks off months of dozens of other clinics, all walk-ins, available in both Santa Cruz and Monterey counties. And remember, you can find more health news on our website. An iconic musical event returns in grand style to the Central Coast this weekend. Harry Connick Jr. is headlining this year's incredible field at the Monterey Jazz Festival. And despite foggy, damp weather this morning on the peninsula, a big crowd of jazz fans streamed into the fairgrounds for the entertainment. I'm here for the music, but I'm also here for the atmosphere. Um, just the, the camaraderie. I have people that I see here once a year, once a year only, that it was like my, some of my best friends. Attendance is down from last year, but tickets are still available with all proceeds going to jazz-related youth programs. The Jazz Festival runs through tomorrow night. In news around the state, a San Bruno resident is suing PG&E. The suit filed by evacuee Steve Dare says the company should turn over the $100 million recovery fund for blast victims to a third party and pay other monetary damages. The blast destroyed nearly 40 homes and claimed at least four lives. In news across America, BP engineers say they are in the final hours of testing and if the results stay steady, Overnight, they will declare the Deepwater Horizon well officially dead. It's good news along the Gulf Coast, but in no way the end to problems there. Action News reporter Jay Gray has the details now from Venice, Louisiana. It's pretty incredible, but I have to say, I know it sounds crazy, I miss the rain. It's about time. Well, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, but we'll take what Mother Nature gives. All sure. right. Thanks a lot, Phil. Well, still to come on Action News Sports, the A's take on the Minnesota Twins. In baseball, A's in Minnesota to play the Twins. Landon Powell gets the A's offense going in the second. Um, but they're pretty spectacular. You see the bunny, those are those special shapes they call them. That looks really neat. And looks hopefully the weather will be very nice for All that. All right, we'll see you tonight at 11. Be sure to join us then. Tonight at 11 on KSBW Action News 8. I'm Elisa Becetta. Government scientists and BP engineers say the well responsible for the worst oil spill in U.S. history will never leak again. Plus, an American hiker released from an Iranian prison is reunited with her family. And the missing cult-like group is found praying in a park. Those stories at 11. Coverage you can count on. Tonight, government scientists and BP engineers say the well responsible for the worst oil spill in U.S. history will never leak again. Plus, an American hiker released from an Iranian prison is reunited with her family. And a community holds a fundraiser for the victims of that San Bruno gas explosion. You're watching KSBW Channel 8, Salinas, Monterey, Santa Cruz. This is Action News 8. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, I'm Elisa Becerra. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with continuing coverage. Ten days after an explosion leveled a San Bruno neighborhood, community members held a fundraiser for the victims still in shock over the gas pipeline burst and the fire that has to date killed four people. Action News reporter Ravi Kapoor covered the explosion from the start and has more for us now from San Bruno. In news around the state, actor Randy Quaid and his wife are in trouble with the law again. Sheriff's deputies in Southern California arrested Randy and Evie Quaid yesterday after a call that they were squatting in their former home. The Quaids claim they own the Montecito property, but the current owner had papers proving ownership. The Quaids were arrested and charged with burglary. The two were arrested earlier this year after they were accused of skipping out on a hotel bill. A frantic search for a small religious group amid fears of a mass suicide ends with everyone being safe. Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies detained the group's leader after all 13 people were found in a Southern California park today. Reina Marisol Chicas is currently hospitalized for a mental evaluation. She and 12 others disappeared Saturday, leaving behind notes indicating they would soon see Jesus and dead relatives in heaven. 
Eight of the missing were children. They have been found. They seem to be in good shape. There doesn't seem to be any um, physical challenges at this point. We're certainly going to do a debriefing. Uh, the, the, the woman that may be, if you will, the leader of this is going to be uh, detained and we're going to talk to her. When deputies approached the group in the park, the children were playing and the adults were praying. Investigators say the adults seemed shocked at the thought that they might harm themselves. They did not find any evidence of a planned mass suicide. In News Across America tonight, government scientists and BP engineers say the well responsible for the worst oil spill in U.S. history will never leak again. But many say the cleanup and recovery in the Gulf is far from over. Action News reporter Jay Gray has details now from Venice, Louisiana. A woman who had acid thrown on her face talks about her ordeal. Police believe the attacker may have been trying to copycat an acid attack in Vancouver, Washington, which later turned out to be a hoax. Action News reporter Michelle Relaford has more on the story. There's still much more ahead on Action News 8. When we come back, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad met with United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And free and finally at home, one American speaks after being held in Iran. We'll have those stories and we'll be right back. Stay with us. And Art, let's talk about this weather. Honestly, sure. it's been warm and yes. kind of muggy, right. and I'm like, where am I? The last couple of days, <laughs> it was. You know, you wake up, you go outside early in the morning, it's like it's 67 Florida. degrees or yeah. 61 degrees out there. You're like, yeah. wait a second. That air is now out. We have a cool... Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> We're going to warm up just a little bit tomorrow, of course, and then we go into our uh, cooling. And then it'll... Mm -mm. And finally tonight, waiting tables moved at lightning speed during one contest in Belgium today. But of course, it was a battle for the title of Belgium's fastest waiter in Brussels. More than 100 professionals competed in the 23rd annual race. Participants had to run one and a half miles carrying a tray with three glasses and a bottle of liquor. Oh, Don't crazy. drop the liquor. Oh. Hundreds of spectators watched from the sidelines, cheering on the contestants and a 25-year-old one from Brussels. There you go. Yeah, the key to that is not looking at your tray. Don't look at your tray. Just look at where you need to go. <laughs> Hope that one of those are my waiters. All right. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Be sure to join in tomorrow morning starting at 5 a.m. for Action News Sunrise. See you then.